Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching the last video. So today, that brings me to today's question. Can you sideload Amazon Prime Video and Netflix on the new AT&T DirecTV Now Osprey Android TV box? That's a great question, and we'll get back to that in just a second. But first, I wanna recap some of the stuff that I've had after using the device for the first couple of days. So one of the big things for me, uh, one of the big negatives has been the remote. You know, this, it, it looked like it was really nice when I first got it. I thought, hey, this is going to be a lot better to use than the Apple TV remote. I think it's going to be great. Well, using this touchpad is awful. There's no feel to it. It's not raised really at all. You can't really tell where your hand's at. There is an option to make it an actual touchpad instead of a directional pad. However, that actually made the remote worse. Um, I kept that on for about five minutes and turned it off instantly. However, I do have some good news. So I was browsing the AT&T forums and it looks like this is gonna be um, replaced at some point in time. So I'm hoping that this goes away sooner rather than later. I don't know that I'll be getting the new remote, um, but it sounds like for the production device, it is gonna go away. I know that they changed a bunch of different options and it sounds like they're gonna do like a back button, um, a few things like that. So. Uh, info info was a big one that they talked about. Um, I don't know what else they're going to do. Unfortunately, I didn't take all the specs and quite frankly, I don't really care as long as it's not this. Um, if that's something that you're interested in, you know, join the beta and you can learn about it or comment about it and I can post the specs that they listed um, if this is a big concern to you. The other thing that I would say, this device hasn't become my number one device yet. And the reason for that is, is kind of for the reason of the title of this video today. And I think, I, I think that's gonna be the case for most people. You know, ultimately what this device feels like though, it feels like the, the bridge between a cable box and a streaming device is a Roku, Apple TV. You know, I, I, I kind of feel like it works with, you know, for maybe your parents, my parents, grandparents, something like that, that's not quite ready to go to a Roku or a Fire TV. Um, you know, and I, I think it works great for that. It, it, it looks like TV was designed first. It's clunky to get to the apps. And, you know, obviously the missing of the Netflix and Amazon Prime Video natively is uh, like, I can't believe it. It's, it's, it's a huge oversight and I feel like they're, they're just killing their market with it. But, you know, maybe that'll change once the real device comes out. Um, you know, I, I gotta give them time to release the beta and you know test it maybe they were trying to keep it simple but ultimately since you have to log in with your direct tv now credentials i don't really understand what the what the issue is you know i'm already paying for my service so who cares if i pay for amazon or who cares if i pay for netflix get over yourselves and just make it work you know it's android tv it supposedly runs oreo there's no reason it doesn't work so the only reason it doesn't work is because at&t is blocking it you know um, so that's kind of a big, big concern for me is not having Netflix and not having Amazon. So we'll kind of expand, we'll kind of expand on that in a bit here. So one of the other big negatives that I didn't like about it, um, you know, and I brought it up in the first video about typing on it, how typing was a pain in the butt with the keyboard and this, this, uh, remote with this touchpad, and it's not any better. Um, ultimately what would fix it is being able to type with Google voice. You know, you can do it on Fire TV, you can do it on Apple TV, which quite frankly is the best one in my opinion. Um, I haven't tried the new Roku supposedly, which works with Assistant, so maybe that works. I don't, I don't know, I don't have that yet. So yeah, if they fix the voice feature, I think it would be a lot easier to type on, you know, and, th and, that, and that comes without saying that they're gonna upgrade the remote. So if they upgrade the remote and allow voice typing, I, you know, I really wouldn't have any issue with it. Um, you know, the next thing that's kind of nice that I didn't, that I didn't get to test yet, I was gonna bring my Bluetooth headphones home from work and I absolutely forgot them today. So I haven't tried, but it looks like this device has Bluetooth and it's able to pair with headphones, which would be really nice upgrade over say like a Roku that has the remote mounted um, headphone jack. You know, that's a really cool idea, but this is even a better idea because then there's zero cords whatsoever and you know, who doesn't have Bluetooth headphones at this point? So I think I think that's a really a really nice feature that you know probably gets overlooked and and maybe that's something that's normal with Android TV but again this is my first Android TV box so all right now that we got that kind of out of the way let's address the elephant in the room can you sideload Amazon Prime Video or Netflix onto 
AT&T streaming player? The short answer, no, you cannot. Um, it looks like at one point you were able to do so. I know a couple of people on the forums posted about it. And then in the last update, they, they took away the ability. So I know my box must be a newer version of firmware than what everyone else was on or what these people were on. So maybe they were former employee or maybe they were employees. So they got the device a little bit quicker than me. However, you know, one of the things that I noticed about this, um, and we'll switch, we'll switch, we'll switch to the um, TV here and I'll kind of walk you through what I'm talking about. All right, guys. So here is so this is this is kind of the clunky part about this and what i say when i say it feels like it was designed for cable tv versus um you know as a streaming player the native thing is tv i mean it boots up into tv which is cool which is fine um but it's look at this to get to the apps i have to go here and then here which is a pain in the butt there's no easy way to change through um, at some point, I hope they change it to maybe do a double tap on the home button to get your apps to pull up. And then that way you don't have to go through all the menus and all that stuff. Anyway, so those are the apps. And obviously there is no Netflix, no um, Amazon Prime video. So let's go to the settings. And if you're familiar at all with how to sideload apps on Androids, you have to go to the general settings and then um, app security and it's going to give you the option here or see mine doesn't have this where you can uh, load apps with you know that are unverified or unknown apps excuse me from you know different sources so this option is gone it was never on my device and it must have been on other people's device which is fine um, I was able to get the developer options on which would allow me to do the ADB um, command prompt or command line interface, which I'm familiar with. So I figured, hey, this is going to be no big problem. So what you, what you normally do here with the side loading, um, we'll go back to apps here. See, it's just kind of weird to navigate. And I don't, I, I don't really know why, but it's just not easy. Maybe it's just unnatural. All right, so if you ever side loaded before, this, this tool is, you know, invaluable. ES File Explorer. So I'm gonna plug in a USB here and you can see the internal storage, it shows up there. Um, and I'm gonna plug a USB into this and we'll see what happens. You'll see it show up. Two hours later. All right, so open, yes. So I'm just gonna do this, that's fine. So you can see the device there and it's trying to read it, but for whatever reason, it doesn't like it. And so I'm unable to read it. Okay, great, no problem. So the next way to um, load this stuff via um, you know, ES File Explorer is to go to the cloud. So we'll navigate there. So there we are. And it'll load here. Let's see, it takes a little bit. All right, so once you're loaded into this, you can see that we come up here and we can see the Amazon Prime APK in my um, cloud drive. Select it. This is normal. It's going to go ahead and download it here. 2,000 years later. So what we got here, you can view APK, APK content, or you can just install. And that's what I want to do. I want to install this third-party client. Package installer, this time only. All right, so this is the normal part here, and this is where, um, you know, on a phone that you have zero issue doing this. So if you go into settings here, and it just brings you into settings. What it should do is it should bring you to an app setting. And then in that app setting, you're able to allow sideloaded apps. And I can't find that setting. So if somebody knows about that, let me know. That'd be great. Um, like I said, I can't find it. And there I've dug through the apps. So maybe I'm missing something. But uh, yeah. So that's where we're at with that. So ultimately, you can't go ahead and install it. 
And with that, you know, that's, that's where we're at right now. You know, I'm stuck on this and I can't get it to load. Um, however, it looks like somebody on the forum said they are no longer able to run this app on their, on their Apple TV or on their Apple TV, excuse me. Somebody on the forum said that they're no longer to run this on their Osprey, which is unfortunate because then this would legitimately be my number one player right now. I like the direct TV now interface and it'll probably allow me to, you know, consume more direct TV now. Um, with that said, I'm going to go back to my Apple TV. I'm not an Apple guy, but quite frankly, it works the best. It has ESPN multicast, which I realize is not AT&T's fault. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's really all I have for you. So if you have any ideas for me or, you know, maybe you got it to work, I'd love to listen. I'd love to figure this out. Like I said, I have experience with ADB and the command, command line interface of Android. However, I was not able to get my computer to recognize my device. Maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. So if you know something about that, you know, I'm, I'm all ears and I'd love to listen and I'd love to, you know, collaborate on something with you. If you, if you have instructions, give you full credit. I don't really care. Um, anyway, yeah. So thanks for watching and I appreciate you sticking around. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and you know what? Stay tuned. I think we're going to have some giveaways coming up. If you can see something over my shoulder there in a brand new box. Look forward to that, so subscribe and some details on that coming up. Thank you for watching.